week we are beginning a formal report project. It continues from Lesson 86 all the way through Lesson 90, and it's a little tricky to navigate all of the submitting to GDP and then opening it back up and going on to continue in the next lesson. So feel free to view this video as a way of walking you through the steps of this long report. Now styles are introduced in this lesson and they will be applied in Lesson 86 through 89 and up to this time you've been using a default word style that includes a Calibri 12 point font, single spacing and spacing after paragraphs of zero point. The style in these lessons will change those defaults for the font size, line spacing, and it's going to alter paragraph spacing. So it's important that you work through the Word Manual lesson before you type Report 8660. That is located here, 86D, Word Processing Styles. Be sure to read this through and do the project in your Word Manual in conjunction with the software here. Then we're going to begin our report. Notice right away that we've got a message over here on the left. Your textbook may have a printing error on page 352 in line 8. The name Furman should be spelled with one more N at the end. Now another reminder is that the steps for completing this report are outlined on page 349 and 350 of your textbook, as well as the checklist that we're going to pull up. So be sure to review those points before you begin work on page 351. And remember that you're going to apply the styles as the final step in each lesson. Now I will also remind you that the directions for this report are different from those you have been using when preparing reports prior to Lesson 86. The correct spacing will be adjusted when you apply the styles, so do follow the directions specifically. The spacing and formatting will be added as the styles are applied. When you're ready, click Start Work. One tricky thing about this project is going to be matching the name at the top of the document with where you're working in Word, and it's going to be a little bit staggered and different, so uh, just keep up with the video as you go along. Now you will press Enter five times to begin the report two inches from the top of the page. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to type the title in all caps, but we're only going to press Enter one time. And notice we are also not worrying about centering it yet. We're going to type the byline in upper and lower case letters and only press enter one time after each line, then type the date, and then we will press enter two times. You also have proofreading marks that you'll need to look up if you don't remember what they stand for. And now we're ready to begin the first paragraph. With the first paragraph finished, we press enter one time and type the side heading in all caps. Press Enter one time, take off Caps Lock, and add the next paragraph. At this point, we press Enter one time again, put on Caps Lock to type Intercultural Seminars, the next side heading. Press Enter one time. Now we are ready for a list of cities, and you'll notice that your textbook says press Enter two times. We do want a blank line between every paragraph and before and after lists, so this part is as usual. I'm going to show you a different method of typing the list. Instead of turning the bullet command on when I begin, I'm going to just type the list of cities. Press Enter two times, as you'll note in the book. You're ready to begin the next paragraph. I'm going to come up here and select Beijing through Warsaw. Then go up to the ribbon and press bullets. All right, our list is complete and correctly formatted, so I'm going to go on and finish the paragraph that is on page 351, or begins on page 351. This paragraph takes us on to page 2, and at this point we're going to begin a new paragraph. We want a blank line between the paragraphs, that means we will press enter two times, one, two. You'll see that I have inserted two paragraphs. There is a blank line between them, which, as I've noted before, requires pressing Enter two times. There is also this correction that was pointed out in GDP to spell Furman with two N's at the end. Word doesn't like it, but you can ignore the red squiggly line for that name. Now, at the end of this paragraph, we're ready for another side heading. So we press Enter one time, turn on Caps Lock, and type Benefits 
of attending the seminars. Press enter one time and begin the next paragraph. I have finished adding all of the remaining content for Part A of our report in Lesson 86. You will notice that I do need to apply bullets to the list here. So I select each item, click the bullet command, and they are all now automatically formatted correctly. Okay, we have all the content entered, but now we need to do the finishing touches. We need to insert a header, and you'll notice on the checklist that I've inserted some instructions about that. They are also in your textbook for the most part. If you have clicked anywhere in your document, you're going to insert a header. We're going to do that here. Just take the first blank option. In the left margin, we're going to type Human Resources Department. We're going to press Tab until we reach the right margin. That's going to require two tab strokes. One, two. We're going to type page and one space following. Then we're going to insert a page number at the current position. So under page number, the drop down menu, come to current position, choose the first option, plain number. Okay, we're not finished yet. We're going to select all the header information. Format it using Cambria 10 point italic. So go to the home ribbon. We're going to select Cambria 10 point and italic. Okay, a couple more steps. Go back to the header and footer tools ribbon and click different first page. Now it seems to have disappeared on page one. But if you scroll down, you'll see it there on page two. We are also going to add a bottom border. Select the heading information, go to the Home tab, the Border menu, click Bottom Border. Now our header is complete and we can close the header and footer. Now we're going to apply the styles that you learned about in the Word Manual lesson. First, we're going to apply the title style to the report title. So selecting the title, we come to the Styles Gallery on the Home ribbon. The title style is on my computer, the first one on the left in the second row. Notice how it centers it and makes it bold and increases the font size. Then we're going to apply the subtitle style to the byline information and the date. So select all of those three lines. Be careful when you're applying styles to only select the lines indicated, not the lines above or below them. For example, when you apply the title style, do not apply it to the five blank lines above the title. All right, here we have the subtitle style in the gallery. I notice that this style, at least in my computer, is not bold. So I'm going to ask you, at least if you're viewing this video, to click bold for those three lines as well. And then to the side headings, we're going to apply Heading 2 style. You can also select a line by moving into the left margin and when your cursor becomes a white arrow, click once to select that line. Let's find Heading 2 right here. Scroll down to Intercultural Seminars and Benefits of Attending the Seminars and that should be it. Now we save our document and submit it to GDP for scoring. Click F12 on your keyboard for the quick and easy way to pull up Save As. Move to your saved place to save your documents. If you've saved it earlier in this session, then it will come up in a directory other than temporary. Save it as the file name supplied by GDP. You can change it, but for this project, it's easier to do it this way. Then we're going to close and submit for scoring in GDP. Browse, find your file, be sure that it is named as just as you saved it, then submit your work. If and when you have zero errors, you are ready to close this video, open the next one, and begin work on report in Lesson 87.